Are you ready for the view from my bed this morning? Welcome to Florida. I'm in Fort Myers, Florida, thanks to Visit Fort Myers, who is hosting me for this trip. It's my first time here. It's actually my first time ever in Florida, which kind of surprises me, but the Fort Myers team has put together the perfect itinerary for me for this week. Lots of outdoors, great dining, beautiful beaches. I can't wait. Also, this hotel I'm staying at, it's the Luminary Hotel. It's an autograph collection hotel, and I've talked about these before. They're always so cool. The water view in this room practically pokes your eyes out when you step into it. It is so beautiful, but that isn't the only cool thing about this room. There's also a TV that comes out of the foot of the bed. I've never stayed somewhere that has this and it feels pretty cool. So my first stop today is the Six Mile Cypress Slough. It's over 3,400 acres of wetland that's full of plants and wildlife. This is so beautiful and peaceful. There's a boardwalk that loops through the slough. It's 1.2 miles round trip. And I'm surrounded by this beautiful wetland, these beautiful cypress trees and the water. So many plants, I've even seen a little wildlife. This is definitely worth the stop if you're in Fort Myers. Next, I headed out to Lover's Key State Park and rented a stand-up paddleboard from Lover's Key Adventures. There's a lot of wildlife to see out here, and the shop directed me to an area that manatees like to hang out. So I got out on the water, paddled a little bit, and I can't believe I actually found them. Manatees are peaceful creatures, so they're not a threat, and it was really cool to be out on the water with them. Something that I've learned about myself in my experience with stand-up paddleboarding is I don't really like the standing up part. I just find it so much more peaceful and immersive if I just sit cross-legged on the paddleboard and paddle around. Is that just me? If you're somebody who tried stand-up paddleboarding and you didn't like it because the standing up was hard and you were falling off and things, I recommend trying it and just sitting. It's really, really nice. This morning, I've driven out to Sanibel Island, which for starters, if you're ever in this area, you have to do. The drive is so beautiful. There are these parts where you're driving over these skinny islands where the ocean is on either side of your car. And everything out here is definitely island vibes. I stopped and got breakfast at this place called the Island Cow that was so cute. And now I'm at the JN Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge that has a four mile one way road through it that you can just roll down with your car and look for wildlife, which is one of my favorite things in the world to do. Go five miles per hour in a car with a camera next to me and try to spot things. I've made it out to Captiva Island and I'm staying out here for a couple of nights. This view from my hotel balcony, I'm practically hanging over the water. It is so beautiful. This is the South Seas Island Resort. So I'm going to be spending the next couple of days enjoying the island and the ocean. Staying out here at South Seas was so nice. For starters, dolphins swim right up to the resort and I was not very cool about it. <gasps> no. There are lots of things to do on Captiva, but the highlight of my stay was getting out on the water. The ocean here is so blue and you'll see lots of wildlife, like even more dolphins, lots of seabirds out fishing, and there are also tons of manatees just hanging out by the docks and marinas, which is really fun. They look like potatoes sitting under the water. There are even parts out in the ocean that it gets so shallow, you can pull your boat up and get out and stand in the middle of the water. I went out to Cabbage Key, which is a tiny island only accessible by boat and it's the perfect way to spend an afternoon. There's a restaurant above the marina where you can have lunch or dessert and there are some walking trails just off the shore. 
It's about 6.30 a.m. and this morning I've woken up early and opened up my balcony doors and curtains and in about five minutes the sun is going to rise perfectly outside of my balcony. This morning I've gone and gotten some breakfast at this really cute place called the Sanibel Sprout on Sanibel Island. Got some coffee and this is my last day in Florida. This is the end of my trip. I really enjoyed my time here. This is my first time being on islands this small, like where you could be standing on one side's beach and in two minutes walk over to the other side's beach. And there are so many of them along this coastline. Like there's Sanibel and Captiva that are really easy to drive to from Fort Myers. But then there are a bunch of other little islands or keys out here that are only accessible by boat. And I feel like you could spend an entire lifetime exploring out here and not make it to all of them. So I definitely recommend this area if you're looking for some beautiful coastline, little islands, island vibes, getting out on the water. Also great dining, lots of seafood, and so many restaurants have water views. Another cool stop to make in Fort Myers is the Edison and Ford Estate. It has these beautiful historic homes and it's really pretty to walk through and there's a lot of history with it. So huge thanks to Visit Fort Myers for having me this week and thank you for coming along with me on this adventure. I hope you all are doing well and I will see you in the next one. Bye.